Buckle up, knuckleheads. This is going to be a WFO overanalyzation on World Supercross. It's going to be completely biased because I believe if you find yourself on the side of the majority, you should stop and reflect. And news outlets have been created throughout history to share a narrative, create an ideology through propaganda. Let's give credit where credit is due. You've got Travis with Moto Aftermath Show. He was the first guy to really break any rumors on this. Then you have Vital that does a good unbiased approach of the troubles for Supercross and they state some sources. You know, Lindsay has done a good job over there. I'm pretty sure they have the same sources as me, but I digress. Then you have Main Event Moto basically sharing what World Supercross said and going, hey, there's rumors that it's in trouble, but ah, we're we're still going strong. We're still growing strong. This was completely PR. I like what they did. They getting ahead of it, but they didn't really say what's going on. And what's actually going on is you've got a big investor allegedly dropping out with uh, Madala Capital, and they are a asset management company that holds about two hundred fifty billion dollars of money under management, and they were going to give. World Supercross, $50 million over the next five years. And I'm pretty sure World Supercross is just burning through money, trying to pay Ken Roxon, Cooper Webb, you know, trying to get everyone they can over here, even though they didn't get Cooper Webb, but you know that they have definitely been trying to. Same thing with Eli Tomac. They're putting a lot of money, and the teams are supposed to be getting a lot of money. They've got a lot of purses. And because of what World Supercross has been doing, um, the American series has responded with the super motocross stuff. And without them, we wouldn't have the influx of capital, the excitement of super motocross. So this is me saying, let's not go with the same narrative because I've read all the comments on Twitter and on all these videos. People want World Supercross to fail. They say, oh, it's a circus. It's never going to do anything. It's it's a clown show. And ironically, you've got <laughs> United States Supercross that is controlled by a company that owns a circus. And because of the potential financial ramifications of losing a big investor, they might have to cancel the next three rounds, leaving Hey, one in Dubai and one in Australia. And again, this is where we need to not wish for their demise, but rally behind them for their success. Most startups have never instantly been successful. If you look at Netflix, they were 20 to $40 million in the hole. It took them six years to become profitable. They almost went through bankruptcy before they are what they are today, revolutionizing <laughs> how we stream content. Apple, they took two years. They went through some real hard financial struggle where you had Bill Gates, love him or hate him, right? I'm not here to talk about politics or any of that. You know, even there might be like an underlying gray area of what I'm speaking on is they invested $50 million as a lifeline to Apple. I'm sure that the red tape and the contracts were built towards Bill Gates, but he understood that competition breeds innovation and a rising tide lifts all ships. So truthfully, if I was super cross, I'd be trying to be like, hey guys, we've got some cash. Do you want to make a deal with the devil? And and I'm saying that with, with a light heart, right? Because you've got conflicting series and one wants to always stay the big shot. So here's an opportunity for them to potentially come in here and have some ownership, some direction on where this is going. And this is where I feel like, especially in this industry of motocross, believe me, I get a lot. When, when people want to sponsor my channel or everything, there is a stigma towards Johnny Hopper, right? I get it. I, I, think, I think it's very simple-minded, and this is why. Because wouldn't you rather have a maybe a smaller piece of the pie, but have a much larger pie? World Supercross is not really interfering with the United States series. Yeah, they've got some conflicting dates and whatever. And, you know, they're trying to take some teams and riders, whatever. But this series is building and they are going towards the world right? Just like MXGP. We don't have a lot of American guys moving over to MXGP. They want to stay here. 
They want to travel the country. They want to be close. They don't want to be going all over the place away from their families and whatnot, you know. But for some reason, the moto industry feels like the United States owns everything and it should be on lockdown. And no, we don't want anyone jumping in and ruffling feathers. I think it's so small-minded to think that way because there is a potential for greatness here. Just like what I said with Bill Gates literally saving Apple, an Apple to almost overcome what Microsoft is today. And back to what I was saying before, Tesla took 18 years to become profitable. Like these guys are having a couple hard times and yeah, you know, they're having some problems. Their first Supercross this year looked a little sketchy sometimes, you know, the smaller stadium. They've got to deal with all sorts of governments and visas and all this stuff trying to get to different places, different kind of dirt. It's probably the reason why Feld has stayed out of any of the world stuff. That's why they went to Canada to say this is a world championship because it was much easy to have resources when you have a country that's literally boarding the United States. You're not trying to do it in Germany. It's not only a logistic issue, but it's a money issue. And I pray that World Supercross finds another funder because we need them. We don't want somebody just to control the entire piece of the market share because that's not good. I mean, I could see Super Motocross going away if these guys go under because they're like, why? Why should we spend more money? Why should we continue to innovate the sport when it was working just fine before? You know, there's there's a saying that wealth is like seawater. The more you drink, the thirstier you become. And it's sometimes good, or it's literally always good, to have a competitor leveling you up in whatever you're doing. Business, riding, this is why guys ride together. It's because you got somebody that is pushing you to the extreme. And that is good. That is good for the consumer. Us, as the consumer, should want these guys to... To succeed for the simple fact that it is going to be for the betterment of the entire industry and sport. So much more money is going to be influxed. Could you imagine how many riders can be found and inspired by a World Supercross series? You've got Supercross in America. It's a country of 350 million people. Roughly, we have around 8 billion people in the world. Just statistically... There are Eli Tomax and Ken Roxons, you know, even though Kenny was from Germany, that have not been found yet. And all they need to do is go to one of these Supercross races that are across the world, get inspired, go buy a bike, and then change racing and history. You know, in closing, the darkest hours just before dawn. We should, again, rally behind World Supercross and not wish for their demise because they have the potential to inspire millions of people and bring billions of dollars to the sport. And in a roundabout way, World Supercross, MX Sports, motocross here in America, I pretty much said the same thing. They can all benefit from their success. For Adam Bailey... The obstacle in the way becomes the way. He is the, the CEO of World Supercross, and he's got everything to lose. Everything to lose. So I am praying for him. I have the belief that they're going to find a new investor, and this thing is going to kick off with some troubles, right? But it's going to take some time. It is absolutely freaking lutely going to take some time for them to be truly, truly successful. And as the great Martin Luther King Jr. once said, a true measure of man is not what he does in times of comfort, but what he does in times of controversy and challenge. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this whole mumbo-jumbo of shenanigans. Brawl!